Today I'd like to do a product review on another external battery pack power bank. And why do you ask? Well, I really like doing them. I think they're very fascinating. And for the past couple months, I've been looking for the best one to use in a 72 hour emergency kit, like a bug out bag. Uh, but you don't have to use them for that. You can use them for anything, whether it be for travel purposes at the airport, EDC purposes. I just think they're really cool. This one is made by Raft Power. And get this. It's the RAF Power 26,800 milliamp hour three port external battery pack. You heard that right, 26,800 milliamp hours. That's just crazy. And we have the three ports here. We have the one amp, we have the 2.1 amp and the uh, 2.4 amp for a maximum of 5.5 amps, uh, which is just really, really nuts. So this one has a lot of features on here that we're gonna test out. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, batteries in general, charging in general, and the functionality of it, and do some testing using our little uh, USB uh, monitors, power monitors over here, and we'll have a few different di devices that we'll be testing as well, and a few different cables. So let's get right down to it. Again, the RAF Power 26,800 milliamp hour three port external battery power bank. Before getting down to the testing portion of this power bank, let's just go over a few of the key features on this RAF power. So again, we have three USB ports here uh, with various amperage. Uh, basically, it's gonna be a plug-in and instantly charge. So you don't necessarily have to press that power button if you wanna just start charging your device. Just plug it in. It's gonna detect that a device is there and it's gonna start charging it. Uh, the best thing about it probably is that iSmart technology that they feature uh, for RAF power. Basically, uh, basically, it's gonna automatically detect what the capacity is of whatever you're charging. It's going to deliver the most optimal charging current, uh, and then it's going to just do go at the fastest, most efficient charge for it, which is very important. You don't want to charge too fast uh, or for too long. It's going to be bad for the battery of whatever it is that you're charging. You're going to ruin it. So you want to make sure you have a smart charging device. Uh, there's a lot of dumb charging devices, uh, and uh, RAF Power, I don't believe, is one of them. Uh, so it has safety protections for short circuit, for overcurrent protection, which is very, very important for batteries. Uh, batteries that uh, start building up heat, uh, gases in there, and you can ruin your device. And basically, once it finishes charging it, it's going to know that it finished charging it, and it's going to just shut off so it's not going to continue pumping power into there and ruin your battery. So those are all really good features for a power bank. So chargers in general have three key functions to them. Charging, stabilizing, and terminating. So for charging, basically getting the charge into the battery that you're trying to charge stabilizing and that's going to be optimizing the charging rate that's going into that battery that you're trying to charge to make sure it's the most efficient charging rate and then terminating knowing when to stop charging that device so you're not continuing to put power into it which will ruin the battery those are the key main features of a charger and uh, the stuff that you want to take into account when selecting one so let's deep dive a little bit into the termination portion which i think is probably the most important of those three features so for charger termination, basically once the device that you're charging is fully charged, uh, the charging current has to be dissipated somehow. Usually that's done through heat and gases, both of which are bad uh, for batteries. So basically the goal is to detect uh, when that's actually going to happen at, uh, based off of the active chemicals, and uh, basically to stop the charging process before any kind of damage uh, were to happen to that while still maintaining the cell temperature uh, is within safe limits and detecting that cutoff point. So you want to be able to detect that before it's too late and that's the whole point on the termination of chargers so right now we're charging an HTC One M9 a smartphone device and we're using the power monitor over here to see what's coming out of that USB port. So uh, basically we have the volts at the top, the amperage in the middle, and the watts in the bottom. And uh, keep in mind that watts is basically volts times amperage. And you can see it's kind of a fluctuate, fluctuating a little bit here and there. That's all that iSmart technology on kind of fi figuring out the best rate to charge this particular device. So again we have that USB cable going in here. Right now we're connected to the 2.4 amp uh, port USB port on here and then we have the actual cable uh, going to the device itself. So there's tools available online that you could download uh, basically to provide you with a little bit more information on how that charge, how efficient that charge is going. One of them is called uh, Amper. Uh, you could download it from a, a Google Play Store and it's going to tell you a little bit more about the device and show how it's charging. Now this doesn't provide an accurate one-to-one -one description on the amperage going here versus what's coming in over there. Basically it's going to be able to detect what's a better USB cable to use. So uh, that's all I really kind of use it for is just detect how efficient the USB cable is. Uh, not all USB cables are, are the same. You could spend more money for a better quality one uh, that will get more efficient charging to a hit. Uh, but this is a good way of basically monitoring that charging rate, uh, what the level of your battery is, and the temperature of it, because that's a very key important uh, part for selecting when that termination is going to occur at, and it's all based off the temperatures of batteries and things like that, and the voltage. 
Okay, if that was a little bit too technical, let's put it into layman's terms. So basically, uh, with the USB charger, similar to the RAF power, you're going to treat it kind of like how you would pouring a beer into a cup. So this is the beer in the bottle, this is the cup. And there's various size cups, as you know, there's pints, uh, there's liter, there's uh, half pints. Uh, you could go from there. And basically, what that iSpark technology is doing with the RAF power, it's detecting the capacity of what it's uh, charging, and then the, just kind of determining what the level of pour is uh, for charging that what's the most efficient way of doing it. We've all done, seen bad pours on beers done where you're getting too much head on it. So uh, basically you could equate that with batteries uh, with a, it's a cell chemical reaction called uh, hysteresis. And basically that's uh, a property or physical or with the chemical systems that don't uh, instantly follow the forces applied to them, but react slowly and do not return completely to their original state. So basically uh, put it with the beer analogy, when you're pouring a beer, you could pour it several different ways. You could just dump it right in there and and you know what's going to happen. Basically, you're going to get a little bit of beer on the bottom, and then you're just going to get a bunch of foam. You could treat that foam as that hysteresis, basically. Where, uh, and that's kind of a bad thing, especially if you're dealing with a smaller cup. That's going to overflow, and it's going to basically pour out a bunch of beer, which is a, just an absolute travesty. Same thing can be said with batteries. If you get that hysteresis going with your battery, basically you're going to overcharge the battery. It's going to damage it. You're going to get that heat and gases. That's a bad thing. You could also do something more of a slow pour to it where it's a very slow uh, pour that's kind of like a slow charge to a battery which is very a uh, kind of a, a dummy charger would be able to do that and basically that's something that's going to charge overnight you're going to be able to control that hysteresis a little bit more but you're not going to really get the head of the beer that's the same way of looking at it so basically uh, with the RAF power with that iSmart technology we're determining the right angle to, ang to angle that glass which is the capacity of the battery and the level and the speed of the pour so basically you want to pour it as fast as you can keep it in mind where the foam is or the hysteresis and you want to be able to fill it efficiently without having too much hysteresis that's going to overflow the cup but you also want to have make sure you have a nice head to it that's a proper pour of a beer and the same thing could be said uh, for the proper charge of a battery and that's what the RAF power smart technology is really doing it's ensuring the, the capacity the right speed to do it keep it in mind on the hysteresis and that chemical reaction that's going on all behind the scenes uh, and it's just really really cool so again, I provided information in the description box below uh, from an article that the Mountain RN sent me, which was just uh, very insightful uh, for how this stuff is actually working. So make sure you check that out. So again, the capacity of the RAV power is uh, 26,800 milliamp hours, which is just absolute crazy, by the way. And oftentimes people think, okay, I have a smartphone uh, that has a battery size of, let's say, uh, 3,300 uh, milliamp hours. So then you think, okay, so basically I'm going to get 8.1 charges uh, on this particular device. But keep in mind, that's 100% charging efficiency, which just does not happen. So maybe in the vacuum of space, under ideal conditions, you might get 100% charging efficiency. But here on Earth, it's most likely going to be around 60% charging efficiency. So that's due to, you know, the heat, the environment, the state of the battery on each of the devices, the USB cable, other things. You're going to see a 60% uh, charging efficiency on there. And that's what RAF Powers advertises uh, on regarding this battery pack. So uh, like they say, they could charge an iPhone 6 Plus or a Galaxy uh, S6 over six times. And what they're listing there on that six times is uh, uh, they're listing that 60% charging efficiency. So I made a little chart based off of a little bit of math, very simple math. I put it into Microsoft Excel. I put uh, multiple uh, popular devices over the last year or so uh, at the time of this video and I listed the battery size and then just showed kind of that charging efficiency. So what it would be at 100% charging efficiency, I also listed 70% and then 60%, which is what uh, we're going to be actually seeing uh, with this particular device. And you might recognize some of the devices that you may have uh, as a personal uh, smartphone device and show and th this will show you uh, the number of charges that you'll get on the device so again this is uh, for smartphones and then I made a, a bar chart uh, which is a horizontal bar chart and also kind of shows just a comparison of all those devices so uh, let's quickly show the one for 100% efficiency and these are all those kind of top 10 of you know, the year 2015 16 uh, smartphone devices and then at that 60% efficiency which is going to be more like it so for example 
on that HTC One uh, M9 that we have over here. Uh, that one's going to be, uh, let's see, uh, HTC One M9. That's going to be right around 5.7 charges at 60% charging efficiency. And during my testing, that's pretty uh, doggone accurate. So I, I really like that Rav Power was honest on the charging uh, capacity and efficiency uh, for the external devices that it would actually be charging. So as always, let's go through the pros and cons, starting off first with the pros. So as you can imagine, the number one pro with this is the huge capacity. I mean, this thing just kind of seems like it lasts forever on the amount of charges that it could get to each device. It's really, really crazy. Uh, this is the highest uh, milliamp hour capacity uh, device that I know of that uh, I've seen. There, there's other competitive devices that might have that as well. I mean, it's just really impressive. I, I, I think they're going to eventually get to a point where you can't really take these on airplanes anymore because there's just too much power on it. Um, um, the number one uh, pro on it is uh, uh, it has a, a wide uh, compatibility with device types. Again, uh, I'm charging uh, flashlights and other uh, USB power banks and uh, you name it, uh, you could, it charges whatever. So whatever you need it to charge, uh, it, it's going to work on it. I really like the, the iSmart technology on it. Uh, it seems to efficiently charge all the devices. I'm very impressed with the speed on all of it and it, I've tested a lot of different uh, device types on here just to ensure, uh, do my due diligence on the testing portion of it. Uh, charging three devices at once is doing it at a rapid time. So that's working really great. Uh, so again, the, uh, the, the recharging speed of this is actually pretty fast too. It's not like it's going to take 24 hours or so. Uh, so it's charging uh, pretty efficiently when you're actually charging the power bank itself. I like that it has a nice little travel pouch with it as well to help keep it... Uh, you know, not getting scraped up or anything like that. You can also put some USB cables in there. It comes with this one USB cable, which is a kind of a flat design. And then it has that scratch protection on here. So you're not going to really see a bunch of nicks on here unless you're really trying, like what I kind of did there. Uh, but for the most part, it kind of, uh, you don't really get a bunch of fingerprints and stuff like that due to the uh, anti-scratch surface treatment that they have on there. And those are all the pros I have listed for the RAF Power. Now let's move on to the cons. So the number one con that I have with it is probably the weight. This probably isn't the best power bank to use for EDC purposes. Again, we're talking a pound or uh, 455 grams. It's going to feel like a brick if you have it in your purse, for example, if you have it in your pocket. Uh, it's just a little bit too large for that. But again, we're talking about a large power bank. You probably aren't intending to you know, carry it in your uh, front pants pocket or anything like that. Uh, so you're going to want to carry this in some kind of backpack, suitcase, or messenger bag. Uh, I think that the power indicator light over here to say what the remaining charge left on here is very minimal. We're we have the four LED lights here, 100%, 75%, 50%, 25%. That's kind of a big difference between 50 and 75%. We're talking between seven, uh, six and 7,000 milliamp hours. That's a few charges on a lot of devices. I really wish that they would uh, bump these LEDs up to 10 LEDs uh, so you'd be able to get a 10% difference on here or just have like a one of the LED, uh, you know, LED indicators that gives an actual percentage a value that you could watch just kind of count down like we've seen on some competitive devices. I think the, the four uh, power indicators is just too minimal for this size of a power bank. Uh, I don't really like the flat USB cables. I think they're prone to wrinkling. Uh, they're, they just kind of get all wound up too over time. Uh, this one is still fairly in, in its baby stage, but over time I find that they uh, get a little bit wrinkled up with other RAF powers that I've tested. I prefer more of the round uh, USB cables. Uh, and then uh, lastly, it doesn't really come with a uh, a charger to actually charge the actual power bank. I know that's not common with a lot of power banks. Most of the time they just include a USB cable and then you figure out it on your own. Uh, but uh, RAF Power does have some some uh, high, uh, some power chargers that, that charge rapidly. I think it'd be kind of a nice gesture to include a version of that with this particular one since it's such a large power bank, it would help uh, uh, charge it even faster. And that's all I have listed for the cons of this power bank. That's going to do it for this product review featuring the RAV Power 26,800 milliamp hour power bank. Uh, it's available right now on Amazon uh, for $50, which I think is a fairly uh, fair rate uh, for this capacity of a power bank. So I'll put information on that in the description box below. We went into a lot of technical details regarding uh, how batteries work and uh, th the kind of things to look out for, as well as the features of this particular power bank. I think that this one would be best served as one for traveling. So if you're always on the go, whether you're going to the mall, 
mall, dropping the kids off at school, if you're going to airports and you need to charge multiple devices, your smartphone, your tablet, your Bluetooth headset, uh, this will get the job done. I also think that it would be uh, work well for an emergency kit like a 72-hour uh, bug out bag, for example. You could keep all your external devices charged. So please leave your comments below in the comment section regarding this particular video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it and we'll see you next time. Again, this one featured the RAV Power 26,800 milliamp hour three-port external battery pack power bank. See you guys next time.